Finish up Wrestling is Real, Breaking Down Act 3. Um, we left off last uh, at the end of Act 2 where Chet and Marty are basically have to meet up. And Jessica forces them to meet up because there are big matches coming up. So... Do we need to like give, uh, give the people any kind of recap, or they watch <laughs> they watch the previous episode? God, I hope they watch the previous episode. So the recap, Kyle, you want to give a short recap? Can we can we give a one minute recap of uh of where we're at and going into Act Three and what Act Three is all about, really? So yeah, Act Three, we left off at, at the end of Act Two where Marty and has to go back with Chet and Jessica forces them to meet up because they're big matches coming up and they need to get together because they're going to be fighting um, in WrestleMania. Are they at odds at this point? I think like, <laughs> yeah, they're okay. like at odds, but kind of like both realize they were wrong in their ways. Like they're almost like going to make up, but they're still kind of fighting. It's not like totally resolved just yet. Um, Act, or so we're gonna just go into Act Three here. Um, Act Three relationship with Chet and Marty gets better. They have dinner at a fancy restaurant, and it's awkward at first. Marty and Jessica are wearing a suit and dress. Chet is wearing his wrestling outfit. <laughs> they exchange words and wrestle through the restaurant. <laughs> Okay, so this is kind of where the movie starts. The relationships in the movie all start falling apart, right? Am I am I kind of accurate? This um, is... I already that kind of <clears throat> happened. This is like the tail end, and they're about to like. This is the solidification that. of that of the rift. Kind of like yeah. this is going to be the last straw. Like for, we just for fought it out, and now we hug it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. no, sorry. I yeah, the that. all okay. his loss has already kind of been We're past done. That. Okay, yeah, that was really at the match when they had their out. Him and Jessica had their out. Uh, the bad guy got stronger. Right. Know? Okay. He I remember out, now. You know, yep. he, him and his dad had his um, had their thing, and uh, he's all alone. So he already has rekindled his love for being the wrestler he should be. Which he I love needs that song. That whole moment. Oh in the movie yeah, is nice. Okay. Yeah. So all of that came together. He's now the wrestler that he needs to be, and the only one that's not tied up relationship wise is his and Chet's relationship him and Jessica are good now right and then him and Chet will be good after they like beat each other up basically and I I do think it's just like a good opportunity for comedy just pure comedic fighting Uh, I think I brought it up last week but like the family guy Peter and chicken fights that are like just that that much too long like i feel like if you write it out page form it could be like four pages of action you know it obviously wouldn't be four pages of screen time but just like a lot of really funny fight moments uh that's nice um all right they uh the makeup they're at jessica's place both putting ice on their wounds you both can sit here until you talk like normal people marty turns on the tv and the VHS player starts to play. It's a 1992 WrestleMania video. The video cuts out, and a home video starts with Jessica in a wrestling outfit and her mom filming her and Chet practicing. She hands the camera over to Chet, and we see the mom showing Jessica some moves. They devise a strategy to beat Dustin's team. Dustin is going to throw everything he can at us, so... We lose so we can lose and get hurt. Do you have more tapes? Do we need to watch all the bad guys to see how they outed all the wrestlers and learn those movements and and ticks? The video cuts out again, and it's Chet and Jessica's mom. (laughs) She shaves his chest in the video. (laughs) 
So this just a, a payoff of the moment, like um, Jessica shaved uh, Golden Boy's chest. Golden Boy talked about it with Chet. Um, okay. Chet had a little bromance Chet, uh, uh, yeah. fist bump with him um, and That's said nice. that his, his old lady used to do the same. Yeah. Uh, so this is that moment. Uh, the big thing is they devised a strategy to beat Tesla's team. This could also be a great moment of like funny, uh, like old footage of the wrestlers. Okay. And um, another montage. <laughs> Rocky has a montage. Uh, it's too many montages. I don't know, man. But they need to. <laughs> they are actually strategizing. We need to have some plans here, of like this is what they do when mm-hmm. they're about to do something bad. They look up at the office. Look at that. They keeps looking up. Um, that, I don't. Montage is not bad here, man. Not like a crazy long time, but like. If they what if they stayed up till morning just watching old tapes, you know, yeah, and like true. Jessica sees them, she falls asleep, but they're just, you know, I like that romancing. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, the listeners must be so happy. <laughs> <hearing this content. laughs> really are a wonderful podcaster. Yep. All right. Jessica and Marty talk about Marty's mom. <laughs> that was a mark. question. <laughs> you can tell by his, yeah, the way he speaks that things are questions, <laughs> that things are excited. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, If it's San on Diego. the teleprompter. So... Yeah, we, this is we are not sure, but we I, a couple scenes need to be here before the fight, and this is we haven't talked about Marty's mom at all, and why? Uh, so I think that scene needs to happen here, um, and then also we need to see I think Marty yeah the cuts ties with the villain or he lies to them, like hey yeah I'm part of you guys, and then when he yep. goes out to the fight, I think because he's like hey for the first fight this is how we're going to do it and he goes off script and the bad guys are like what the fuck he's not on our team yeah so i think maybe it's better if he lies to them okay i think i don't know i like That's, it every yeah, time i, I say it he, i like, lean towards the lying i like that a lot mm-hmm. i i think um i don't want to overdo and rethink it too much but i feel like the the romance plot line right now ha- where it falls apart is is a little thin in how it comes together. I don't remember. Like, like at this current moment, maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but it feels like Jessica's character is kind of like just going along with him doing some douchebag stuff, you know? And I feel like maybe she needs a little more agency. Maybe those se- maybe she doesn't just uh, forgive him. It's somewhere in these like 32 to 33. Okay. Maybe she leaves him with, and he gets back together with Chet first. So that, you know, here in this, toward the end, she, he, they need to come back together, you know, that and and he needs to do, uh, he meaning Golden Boy needs to do something to fix the relationship with Jessica. Because I feel like, I don't remember what he does to make it better. The billboard. Yeah. The billboard. That's that's wonderful, actually. Um, it's a wonderful moment, but, I, but like, would she just be like, you know, I just wonder if this is a person and, you know. I know. She'd be like, oh, great. So you're an asshole and you, you put up a billboard. I think you the, know, like, the problem <laughs> is... Uh, you're such a fucking wrestler, showboating wrestler. <laughs> I, I think the thing is that when he gets mad at her, she kind of is understanding because he's not like... He didn't do anything really. He just gets like, like frustrated. She, yeah, okay. Like because she's just there when he's already mad, basically. Okay, I And got she's kind of like, I'm going to let him like blow some steam off at this point. I've she's been through it, so maybe there needs to be a little bit of dialogue that like, hey, I know what you went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know okay. you don't have to do this for me. I just wanted to give you some space. And he's like, You're not I yeah. would even say like you're not mad at me. It's like I've done that before. Yep. Okay. That's so great. Well then that doesn't I don't think need to be uh, that's good. Yeah, I don't think he, I don't it's know. Already maybe more up. in the dialogue. Well then yeah, I, I mean definitely adding the villain in here <clears throat> yeah. before this like final showdown. I mean, I also just like maybe we think about some of these other sports movies. Like, what if, what do they have? What moments are good before the final showdown? You know, like a. And we're we're talking about dodgeball a lot during this process, mm-hmm. and before dodgeball, uh, everyone is obviously like they don't even know if the team's going to come together at this point. 
I don't. Uh, the, they don't know the if moment Vince Vaughn's going to show up. Yeah. Well, the villain shows in the briefcase. This is a hundred thousand dollars. Doesn't right. look like much. In the, it's not a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a little stack of cash, <laughs> and then he sees Lance Armstrong at the airport. He's like, yeah, I got cancer. didn't stop me. What's stopping you? Yeah. And he's like, ah, oh, shit. I got to go back. And he goes back. Now there's, And then the final show. And, that's, that's and again, that's. I feel like this, comes, this brings me back to this fundamental question of, like, what is Golden Boy's character arc? Because where is Golden Boy... You know, at this point in the movie, where is he supposed to be? We did give him those moments way earlier in the movie, or not way earlier. Actually, it was a couple couple scenes ago, uh, where he reconnects with who he's supposed to be. Yeah, you know, a couple that's, scenes ago. That's his. So, are you saying it's not close enough to maybe the final fight? I don't. Which I mean, you might we, we don't right. have to. We don't have to do exactly dodgeball. It's I just know, you know. No, but I'm just in in an in an arc. You kind of want to see that maybe before but he in goes a good, in that final arc. Final. I, I feel like what's good about that movie is the audience doesn't know what he's going to do, and they are disappointed. At this point, the audience is disappointed with him. Yeah. You know? You're right. So it's just from the audience's perspective, how do we feel about the guy that's meant to be, you know, coming out on top and defeating this villain? Um, I'm probably definitely still sticking around if I made it this far and I like all these actors and it's funny enough, you know, like I, maybe I'm harping on it too much. So but what if he, oh no, no, no. What if he, uh, what if he makes amends with Jessica and Chet, right? Cause he cares about more of the relationship rather than the fight and then says he's not going to fight. He should, he should give up fighting. And then they accept that because their relationship is mended and he's like, that's why I got so angry and all that stuff. Yeah. Now, we already did one booster rocket, which is Ron, but I actually wanted, uh, in the fun and games, I was saying it might be good for Chet to get his moment of I could be the best with that guy, uh, Ch- Champ from Anchorman, mm-hmm. and what if he shows up somewhere along to kind of give him the, the little extra, like, why aren't you fighting? Who else would do it? I'm not really sure. There has to be either somebody or something that... Yeah, <clears throat> and why are they okay with him? Not, I mean, they're just like whatever you want to do. Like he he just decides to last minute. Where does this happen? I like it. Just where does it land? It maybe it negates the thing we just came up with of them like planning and all that stuff. You know, maybe that's just gone. Um, and the decision to hang up the tights is, <laughs> uh, or at least is is a little bit earlier. Like, he goes back and has that moment with all those kids and, like, you know, sees what the glimpse of stardom and professional life has done to him. And he says, and there is when he says, fuck it. And he tells that to Chet in the restaurant, and that's why they get in the fight. (laughs) Okay. I don't know. What was, what did we, you know, we talked, I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast much, but we talked a lot early on about like, what is his flaw as a character, Golden Boy? Um, It's bad that we have to think this hard about it, actually. Well, I think what it was, was uh, he, at, at some point we said something about him being willing to sacrifice uh, some good potentials in his life to live out his dream. So he was like saying no to relationships and he was shutting out relationships um, in pursuit of this dream. I don't know if that's accurate with the guy we've written so far, you know, but um, I think it's kind of, we're, we're at a point in the writing here where it's sort of pivotal to know because the audience wants him, wants to be teetering from like, you know, who are you going to be? You, through the movie, you kind of dip into, like, someone you shouldn't be. You have this moment of resurgence. And then it's a question of what are you going to do next? And right now, what we have is, like, they're just telling us what we're what they're going to do next. And then they go do the next thing, you know, rather than there being a question of what's going to happen. Um, I don't have any a- answers, obviously. I like I do, you know what I mean? But, like, I'm just po- trying to pose the questions to, yeah. like, try to come to a solution. It like what if what if Marty said I'm not going to wrestle anymore 
I'm not. This is the biggest night and of both of our lives. Puts on the security lives. guard outfit. <laughs> yeah. What if What if that happens? What if Chet said I'm not going to wrestle then? You know. What if Chet said I see what this is doing to you. It's doing to us. I'm not doing this shit. You got to break my back again. <laughs> I, or I, I, I'm breaking my back again, you know, or whatever. Um, just a what if. What if Jessica is the is the tag team? I was thinking that. You know, she there's this like plant of her like with her mom and the I know and the movies and stuff like that. Like, why not just she gets in the fight? She does later on. Yeah, but but why not right away? Why not instead of instead of you know. What, you know, like, what if it's again this? Um, we can, maybe we just keep moving forward. I don't want to like throw too many wrenches, but you know, this is where I I start to question. I love everything we've come up with. I think or you've come up with really. Um, I think there's good comedy. There's good plot here, but but I, I mean, he does have the moment. I mean, he really is down and out. And he's like, I'm over it, and he asks Ron for his job back, and Ron is kind of like, Hey, do we need another one of those moments? Does that moment need to be stronger? I wonder again if it's the timing of it that I'm questioning. And maybe maybe I need to see it on like in pages or something. Like how quickly are these things, you know, maybe I'm thinking yeah. I'm feeling like a I'm lot also, of movies happen, but maybe it's not a lot of movies happened since then. It's kind of, you know. I'm also thinking he could have that moment with Ron and Ron saying like get your relationships in order kind of thing. Uh, and he does, and he doesn't feel like he still wants to do it. And he's like, I don't want to. And then we have PC John Cena, maybe like, <laughs> he's like, listen, yeah. like he can be the he one can, that pushes him. He can be the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I had my legs, like I crushed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I still, like literally the Lance Armstrong thing. I was knocked out in the middle of the ring. They said I, <laughs> I have the worst brain hemorrhage <laughs> I've ever had. <laughs> I still want to, dude, you're a great wrestler. Can I say that? Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing, and I want to see you out there. I like, you yeah. know, I'm saying that like a normal person. I'm a, and then maybe he leaves, and John Cena finally has his like, this is his third moment, yeah. and he's like, yeah, John Cena, you're a good person. <laughs> 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 oh, I love that <laughs> to himself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, PC John Cena is probably my favorite character you've come up with <laughs> like, of all of them. Uh, so then that's he great. has that moment. Okay, I like that. Um, yeah, I think all of this is great. I just maybe we maybe what we need to figure out is the stakes, kind of you know like um, again dodgeball is so good because it's like and it's simple but it's like you're gonna lose your gym. Mm -hmm. You need a hundred thousand dollars. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's like here's the answer to the whole movie sitting right in front of you, and now you have to decide: do you want to solve the whole movie? right here the easy way or do you care about these people these weirdos you know like that's gold you know you kind of want I, I would love to get it to that place where like the stakes are between this or that and whatever I choose is who I am you know um, but I think we can keep moving forward and you know, we can get to that as we write I mean I'm immediately thinking just like what if what if this character does the same thing and takes over the the gym that he's at he buys out the underground wrestling gym he starts oh, buying up yeah. everything i'm fine with the, anybody watching <laughs> us is like okay so this is a straight dodgeball rip yeah <laughs> yeah this is a because dodgeball is perfect for me like i think it's a perfect movie so uh, so there is a pl there's a time when chet and chet fury is fighting overlord in the underground wrestling and he maybe just kicks him out like he's like in the thing and he's like, I don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't have to fight you. Like he's like my body, like he's always, like he keeps like saying things like to not yeah. fight him. He's like, just fight me. He's like, I don't have to. I bought this place. You're out of here. That's good. And he's like, what? And Chet never tells it to him maybe, or uh, maybe when uh, Golden uh, Marty decides still not to do it, he hears that Overlord bought the underground wrestling building. What if the, uh, under, the underground? <laughs> there's two underground this, wrestling. Yeah, no, no, I know, wrestling I know. There's and the community underground wrestling. and underground. So, okay, not to make it super convoluted, <laughs> but what if um, he Dustin bought himself onto the board of the nonprofit like charity that does the underground wrestling thing, or the not under? I'm sorry, the community mm -hmm. wrestling. 
So he's now in charge of community wrestling. I'm sure of all the wrestling. And basically it's – so Golden Boy goes back to community wrestling yeah. and says, fuck it. He actually goes back, and then he doesn't have a choice because community wrestling is merged with uh, the world, the Galactic Re- Wrestling Federation. He starts buying everything. Yeah. I think everything. Yeah. Community wrestling and the underground wrestling. And then could it be like, you know, I, where where does the villain become, the, you know, like – where does the relationship change between the villain and that? But like, could there be some kind of barter ultimatum thing? Like, okay, if you if you do this, then you can get that. If you can, you know, if you can beat me, if you can beat my team in a real wrestling match, not a scripted wrestling, because like his whole thing, right? His whole thing is like, if it bleeds, it leads. Like, right? He mm, wants real. Yeah, he wants yeah. to basically be MMA. Yeah. Yeah. For all for all so he's like and well fundamentally i guess like you could maybe say golden boy would disagree with that because wrestling is not about sort of the it's not about it's not a blood sport barbaric sort of thing it's actually a story that's woven with characters and it's like and it's an experience of a story that you can be a part of by being a fan so it's a play he would never want to draw blood kind of you know so it's like he doesn't believe in that so the decision is like you need to go on national television and be the first full out uh like wrestling is real (laughs) you know what i mean like this match is gonna be real and I'm talking like backyard rules real. Uh, Anything goes. And then and then he turns and he cuts his own face with like a <laughs> and it, and blood starts running down <laughs> and, and he delivers the next line whatever that is I'm not good at that part. Um, this feels like it should be Will Arnett the more I say it. Yeah, I'm um, fine with that actually. I think it, yeah. It's ho- where is like it's hokey. I don't know where like where we're tilting toward tone on the movie, mm-hmm. but like because like Dodgeball's tone is. It's broad, man. Like that that guy doesn't exist, you know? Or he does. I don't probably does. I mean, Patches gets killed by like something falling off. A sign that yeah. says and it says something like like lucky something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's very good. Um Yeah, and that's what we want, right? Like that's that's kind yeah, of the tone. Okay, then the tone. I think he I think yeah, the ultimatum would be fine. Okay. So and 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 maybe maybe we can pepper a few more like choices throughout because it's got it like you you want to see that path, Golden Boy's character arc. You want to see through the choices he makes, and like the lesson he learns by the end. So if he if he's basically like I'm out, and they're accepting Jessica and Chet, and then Chet's at the underground wrestling thing, Dustin shows up, and he's like, tells him I bought the place. Mm-hmm. Golden Boy shows up at community wrestling. It's all locked up. He's like, "What happened?" And they're like, Di- "New management." And he yep. sees over Dustin, like doing yep. something. He's like, "What the fuck?" <clears throat> or Dustin just confronts him right there. Um, so he won't lie to them. He's gonna be that's fully great. involved. We had it. He lies. No, we don't have it. He, it's like he's fully I'm I against think, you. I, at this point, I yeah. think in the movie, it's you're the villain. You're the villain. I think he needs to he needs to learn that for himself because he goes too far in the other direction. Like maybe he really draws blood, but like what is this? He has this thing that Dustin like tries to take him under his wing, and he be, starts becoming famous. We haven't really put some actual. Uh, scene work in that you know what i mean like what is it what's happening how does that play out what does it look like what what are those scenes maybe those scenes are wrestling is becoming too real and dustin is pushing golden boy to do that and the more golden boy does that the more fame he earns sort of and maybe it just gets to a point that's too far that night that that everything falls apart some of this is like it's hard because you also want to toe the line of like I, I don't know what line you want to tell. Like, how, how what would it actually look like if this guy, Dustin, really existed and he was trying to make, say Vince McMahon was trying to make the WWE into the MMA and and he was going to do it through, like, a, a process, not just, like, a, a rebrand. Like, right. what would he do? What would it look like? Would the matches, like, start getting more brutal in real time, you know? 
would fans see things in real time? They're just like, what? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. Like, I would say probably not. He would try different things in the wrestling arena of it, but then he'd probably just like switch it over for like completely in one. So they did do like season. a thing called Brawl for All, which was like basically boxing with the wrestlers, and they say it was like the worst thing. Yeah, that they ever I can see did. them testing things out, like because the yeah. wrestlers but actually got hurt was the problem, and they're like, right. "Yeah, we lost so much money because like, I guess this one guy they like brought in to like be their next star got knocked out in like the first round, and they lost like." Ten million dollars right away because they were betting on him being like the next star of this uh, thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't like a couple other guys like got seriously injured because they were like actually fighting. Like, so that kind of thing actually, like that seems like the right scene to be somewhere up in like the second quarter of this movie. So they have a scene where he's like testing those things, and Golden Boy is becoming is is being rewarded for being a part of that. You know? Okay. So, like, I mean, I can just say, like, the Brawl for All thing was, like, a whole bracket, and, like, the main winner of that got to fight Steve Austin, Stone Cold. Okay. At, like, the So, height. it would just so make was, your like, career. Yeah. So, that was, like, the point of that. Got it. But they did bring in this other guy that got knocked out, like, right away that they thought was going to win. It was, like, this whole issue because their wrestlers were hurt and not, like, performing anymore. I mean... I don't know. I don't have answers or anything, but I feel like this is we're getting to a a good place of like, here's the way that Dustin wants the world to be. Here's the way Golden Boy wants the world to be. And now like he has, to, you know, Golden Boy has to make sacrifices in his own life to say, I'm not going to help you, you know, do that. Um, Until he reaches a point in the movie where he doesn't have a choice but to be involved and then has to be, you know, a hero. But it's kind of weird because then they actually have to fight them. So it's like, what's the lesson in that? <laughs> right. <laughs> Who gives a shit? <laughs> like fighting. That's true too. It's that. Okay. Um, we can just keep moving forward. Sorry, I didn't. I feel like I derailed. Yeah, it definitely us a lot, like but... changes up what we. I mean, I'll just go through what we had. But I kind of. You're not wrong. Like I do think the build up is more like there needs to be more matches that are like. <clears throat> This build up of Dustin like trying to get wrestling, his way, real wrestling, and like then, the yeah, villain and Marty plan like turning into like more yeah. of a like shittier person by like hurting people and stuff. Uh, all right. Um, so they go over the plan to fight the guys. This might all change anyway, though. Uh, Chet and Marty enter the ring as the first contestants in the Iron Man Royal Rumble tag ladder match <laughs> the first opponents are david and one of dustin's posse uh and then in this match they just fight through like a bunch of people i don't know if we even like have this no this thing. is very broad so okay. like the final team comes out marty and chet are struggling to survive then we have the underground wrestlers that come in for support they knock out the last team. Chet climbs up the ladder, and just as he's about to grab the belt and finish the match, the lights go out, and the Grim Reaper chime starts. The Grim Reaper comes out with Brody, which is Marty's dad, Golden Boy's father. Grim Reaper takes off her mask to reveal it's Dustin's posse member, Tanya, the one that's mm -hmm. talking shit the whole time that mm -hmm. she's like going to decapitate people. And they're kind of <laughs> sick of it, too, constantly. The fight begins. Brody is knocked out. There needs to be obviously a big emotional thing there that Marty's going through. Mm -hmm. It's just the Grim Reaper and she's losing. Grim Reaper drop kicks the ladder, throwing Chet out of the ring. Marty and Chet start winning, crowds in an uproar, and then Dustin comes down from the zip line <laughs> from his office to the <laughs> ring. That's he a great plan. Payoff. <laughs> both oh, of them. I love it. Tanya gets I put a zip line in here. <laughs> Who would do that? <laughs> Who would Insurance do that? premiums. Forget about <laughs> it. <laughs> She toes up with Tanya. So Jessica jumps in. Yeah. And she toes up with Tanya. And and I think Golden um uh Dustin's always just like, not fair, not <laughs> always. It's just like three V three. And he's like, ah and he just like always is like, I'm fine with it. Let's <laughs> you're right. It is fair. Um Brody wakes up and jumps back in the ring. It's now a three V three. Tanya and Brody are both defeated. Jessica is hurt outside the ring. Chet and Marty go up against Dustin. Dustin takes out a knife. <laughs> he started. Okay. I told you it was gonna get real. It's getting real. Yeah. So yeah, he definitely has to say yep. that. 
um because he starts going obviously well over the deep end this sh it should be something he says three times in the movie like early on it's like hey are you ready because you're gonna be famous this is gonna get real and then somewhere in the middle where he's like yes. and then it gets real okay wrestling is real <laughs> God. the title of the movie <laughs> Uh, Dustin <laughs> takes out a knife, stabs Chet. Marty's in a panic. His fan from the underground wrestling yells to him, chair! Throws him the chair like Marty did when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. He throws it. Marty, as a kid, maybe should yell chair. Okay, that's like a thing that he, okay, nice. And then throw it. Throws it to Marty as Dustin looks at him and charges him with the knife. Wham, he's knocked out. That's all Wham. we got, actually. There's, I think, needs to be at least two more scenes, kind of resolution wise. Yeah, or I was gonna say, or like, <clears throat> well, what's the wham, he's knocked the out, and then like you think they win, and then all of a sudden someone gets stabbed. <laughs> like, <laughs> is it one of those like the killers never, the killers never <laughs> dead I'm, moments? I'm <laughs> what if they all get stabbed? <laughs> Look, I mean, like it just he goes on a rampage, and like he stabs Jessica, and then he stabs Chet, and then he stabs Golden Boy, and the knife sticking out of him, and then they have this epic like. <laughs> You know, fighting, scream, and it's like live on TV. <laughs> like that. And and basically, it's like you know, here's the point of the movie is like my point of view versus yours, and mine is right. You know, I like that's being like you hit me with a chair. And it's like you stab me in the <laughs> you neck. Stab me. You stab in her. my you shoulder. The knife I like, like him stabbing out a lot of people. Like, I do like the last one, just like in Golden Boy's like shoulder uh, though, just staying there <laughs> while they're like yeah. still scuffling. And they're like whatever. fighting still, yeah. Or, like security's trying to pull him out. And, or whatever and probably like thing. one final plant and payoff move. Like, uh, is this too? Is this too movie? Mo like movie esque to do like. There's a move that nobody's ever been able to we do. Talked you know, about like, that. Well, that was the thing we did talk the about. The golden like, shower. We talked about <laughs> the golden shower. The golden shower, that's right. Yeah. But I don't the know. Golden shower. It's we, blue steel. And we also thought steel. of Balls of Fury, Chet Fury. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which um, is his, like. It is very bla Blades of Glory. Yeah, I mean, um, it's all of them, right? Like, yeah, it is. It's a mixture. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I'm thinking, yeah, how does it result? We need to have that it's part, the that, lot, great, the pickle. Yeah. that great plant definitive end that we don't have. And from there, we need a good resolution of that fight and then a good like aftermath resolution of maybe where everyone's at or I'm yeah. not really sure. And we don't have that. So, I mean, bottom line is they, ka-chow, they win. I think... Again, I know we're riffing on dodgeball so much, but a great uh, closing image would probably be just like the like PC John Cena and like all the characters you saw throughout yeah. at the community wrestling, you know, like a, cool. an, a charity event or something like held by the GWF and the guy from early on, like the old guy that was wrestling with him beats Golden Boy or something like that. You know, and then like the Shark Tank a, boards, they're eating like hot dogs. Yeah, or whatever, like, it's watching. just like, cam it's Cameo City. It's like oh, Cameo here, City. Everybody that was fun in this movie, and now everything's like great. And wrestling is real. Totally. Real. That's beautiful. I actually like that. It's simple. All right. Well, I think we have a lot of thought to put into this character. I think we have great plot points. We have, a, a, I think, an engaging story, but, um. That's my biggest question for the movie right now is like, where does his character go? What decisions are he is he making throughout that leads him down this path of like having no choice but to, you know, uh, be a part of this story and bring it bring it on home. <laughs>